Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So here we are once again, another Tesla reaction video. Now guys, I really wish I didn't need to make these, but now and then somebody's just given a big enough platform and spouts enough drivel that I just can't let it slide. I don't want investors out there in the general public to be hearing this stuff, believing it and acting on it and losing shit tons of money. So Gordon Johnson, any other bears that are out there, just for the record, you keep going on television and spouting drivel and I will continue to react and embarrass you in front of tens of thousands of people on YouTube. So let's see what this investment genius had to say about Tesla in 2013, seven years ago. Hey guys, if you'd like to get a free stock or two and help out the channel and you're in the US, Australia, UK or New Zealand, check out the links to Weeble and Stake in the description below. Let's get back to it. Gordon Johnson, in your view, where should be valued at right now? I think Tesla's a $50 stock. Essentially, people are valuing this car, again, based on a Gen 3 model for which there is no prototype. Tesla's cars cost about $80,000 to $90,000 right now. They're using, essentially, laptop batteries. They're packaging Panasonic laptop batteries into these car batteries, which are effectively the bulk of the cost. How are they, those, those batteries have been scaled up. How are they going to get more costs out of that? I don't know. I think the stock is grossly overvalued. I think the, the, the correction is, is not anywhere near done, and, and I'm selling the stock. So in fairness to Gordon, in 2013, he's making comments that how are they going to scale up their laptop batteries to make any money out of them, blah, blah, blah. And also, they're being valued based on this new Gen 3, which is now the Model 3, but that hadn't been revealed at the time. So like, how can you possibly be valuing the stock where it's at? That's all good and well. He had a $50 price target in 2013. It's now 2020. We've seen that Tesla has, in fact, profitably scaled up their batteries. They have the best battery tech in the world. They're making large profits on all of their vehicles. And the Model 3 is the best selling. It's just destroying everything in terms of sales. So let's see how his tune has changed now. Our next guest says the second half of this year is when Tesla's hyper growth narrative falls apart uh, and next year uh, access to capital markets wanes. Joining us now is Gordon Johnson, CEO and founder of GLJ Research. So we want to hear your your entire bear case, uh, Gordon. And and how many years have you watched as this has uh, just sort of confounded people with with your view? And, And have you have you been recommending a short uh, the entire time? Yeah, so we, we have been recommending a short the entire time. And- okay, so the entire time. Now, when Gordon had that interview in 2013, Tesla stock was around $100, $135 a share. Today, it's in the 900s, close to $1,000. Since then, Tesla's revenue has gone from $413 million in 2012 to $24 billion in 2019. It's like a 60x increase. And that entire time, Gordon has been recommending people short the stock. That is really worth letting sink in. Really worth letting sink in the entire time. You know, quite frankly, it really kind of took off late last year. So let me just go through the thesis very quickly. Okay. So if you look at Tesla, right, What's key is revenue. I don't think it's uh, production or shipments because at a certain price, there's infinite demand. At a dollar, everybody would buy a Tesla car. So if you look at their revenue in the fourth quarter of 18, essentially their revenue has peaked or peaked in the fourth quarter of 18. And if you look at 2Q estimates, you're, you're not going to see revenues at that level for the past six quarters. So when you think about this being a hyper growth story, the numbers just don't pan out. So if we're to believe what Gordon just inferred, suggested, Tesla revenue peaked in Q4 2018, yet revenue was higher in Q4 2019. So let's put that garbage in the bin. Let's get to the next point. So this isn't a hyper growth story. Okay, cool. So in 2009, Tesla did like $112 million of revenue. 10 years later in 2019, they did $24 billion with a B dollars in revenue. What is this guy talking about? Really? If you go on and you look at their market share, Netherlands, Norway, Spain. And the reason why we cite those is because they provide registrations daily. Come on. Nobody, surely nobody is going to fall for this. They've cherry picked three particular countries to support their ridiculous thesis rather than looking at Tesla's total global sales. Because, I mean, that's what matters, right? When we're talking about Tesla's demand, we're not talking about Tesla's demand in Spain or the Netherlands or Norway. Why would they choose these particular three countries to represent their understanding of Tesla's demand and back up their thesis when they could just use Tesla's global sales as a way of gauging demand? (laughs) I mean, come on, guys, really, come on. Tesla's market share in those three countries combined has fallen from 35% in the fourth quarter of last year to 3% 2Q quarter to date as of last Thursday. And specifically Norway, which is the most advantageous market for 
um, EVs. They, they basically subsidize 50 percent of the EV. Tesla's market share has fallen from roughly 37 percent in one Q of 19 to roughly 4 percent two Q quarter to date through today. No, 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 no. You are not getting away with that one, mate. I'm sorry. So let's clear up the Norway thing once and for all. First, the population of Norway is less than 6 million people, so it's about the same size as Sydney in Australia. So it's a city-sized country. It's not representative of a large and meaningful market. And even more importantly than that, it is the world's most mature electric vehicle market. It has the highest number of electric vehicles per capita. Let's have a think about this for a moment, guys. What does it mean? Of all the drivers who own vehicles in Norway, there's more who have an electric vehicle than anywhere else on earth. So think about that. What's the buying process? You're getting a new vehicle. It's going to be electric. What do you do? You do a little bit of homework, some research. You discover the best vehicle out there. Oh, it's a Tesla. I buy it. It's a mature market. This process has happened literally tens and tens of thousands of times in Norway. Tesla has penetrated that market. Most of the people who wanted to buy a new New vehicle an electric vehicle already did and it was a tesla so of course they're not going to be showing quarter over quarter growth in a saturated mature electric vehicle market come on and the reason why norway is important is because if you're thinking the world is going evs that's the market to look at that's where you have all the competition and keep in mind tesla's market share in europe is literally collapsing the no figures cited of course perhaps he's just extrapolating based on norway despite the fact you don't have the small fully ev crossovers from bmw Volvo with the Polestar, uh, Mercedes, VW that are coming out later this year. Oh, here we go. The competition is coming. Are you scared? I'm scared. I'm really worried about that. Yeah, we've seen how well the competition has killed Tesla in the past, hasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So let's throw that one in the bin too. Now, guys, the reason that I'm going over this, it is actually important to listen to what Tesla bears and short sellers have to say because they're trying to validate or invalidate their thesis to get in or out of a position. So they're trying to make money whatever side of the stock they're on. It's still important they're doing their diligence and their research. But my gut feeling is that Gordon Johnson isn't actually as stupid as he sounds. I could be hallucinating here. Let me know, Gordon, if you watch this, maybe I'm wrong. But it seems more likely you're in fact willing to go on television and embarrass yourself because by doing so, you may have enough of an impact on the stock that you and people can make a lot of money based on these decisions. So it's like, you know what? I'll go take one for the team. I'll go on television and self-immolate. That's okay. Some idiot on YouTube is going to roast me for sounding like a fool because I do. That's fair because you know what? gonna make lots of money for lots of people anyway. This is my feeling I get from Gordon because he never comes to the table with a point that makes any sense. They're so easily refuted. It's just embarrassing. I don't know guys, let me know in the comments below. Do you think Gordon Johnson legitimately actually believes the stuff he's saying, the stuff he's inferring, the things that he's suggesting and implying about Tesla are actually correct? He actually believes that? Or is it more possible, is it perhaps likely that he has ulterior motives? He's okay to go out on television and embarrass himself because by doing so, he will make himself and many others a lot of money. What do you think? What's possible? Um, and we think that's going to come to the forefront um, as numbers come out later this year. That right there, guys, is a Gordon Johnson special. Have a look on Google after you watch this video. Some of his proclamations about Tesla. Demand is going to collapse in the next quarter or the second half of the year. And it's always just this ridiculous apocalyptic call about next quarter or the quarter after that that just never arrives and they're baseless claims this is just a repeating recurring theme so i can't let shit like this happen again okay if i hear somebody go out and spout complete drivel and just mislead and deceive people potentially costing them a lot of money think about the mom and dad investor who hears this they don't do their homework they go oh my gosh the deliveries are down in norway oh my gosh oh oh the competition is coming and they don't understand they haven't done the homework they haven't looked at seen how embarrassingly far ahead of everyone Tesla is on everything that matters. They may lose stupid amounts of money shorting the stock or avoiding the opportunity or selling when they own the stock and they had the thesis and now suddenly they see this clown and he just talks them out of it. I'm not going to let people get away with this anymore. Now I'm not trying to attack Gordon Johnson personally but either he's a moron and that could be true and I don't mean that as an insult I just mean that as a fact like maybe there's just something's gone wrong intellectually he's some disability and he's not very smart and that's possible and that's okay like I really feel for the guy if that's the case. But on the other side of the coin, it's also possible, and given the fact that he is a short seller, it is in his direct interest to talk smack about the company. It is possible that his goal when appearing on television is in fact to trash Tesla stock using data points and information and any tactic he wishes to, to deceive and mislead people about the facts of the matter. I feel that that's what's going on and I will not stand for it. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Yeah, even Gordon. He may know nothing about Tesla, he may have his ethical compass pointed in the opposite direction to mine. That's okay, I still have love for everyone out there, even if some of the things they do aren't great.
And don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake. Links below. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like to access exclusive videos, regular Q&As, behind the scenes content and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description and you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching. So thanks again.